Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Business Direct. We are super excited to be interviewing Latasha Bird from Savannah State University. She is the owner of Curvy Canvas. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Welcome, Latasha. Thank you. Thank you. It's so funny. Everybody calls me Latasha Bird because everybody thinks Bird is my last name, but it's like my nickname. <laughs> oh my gosh, all these years I really thought. No, everybody thinks Bird is my last name. <laughs> Brown. <laughs> Everybody thinks Bird is my last name, but that's just my nickname. But Yo, now I write Latasha okay. Bird. I've known this girl for years. <laughs> Everybody thinks that I promise you. All right. Well, welcome Latasha Brown, aka Bird. You know, I was trying to call her Bird because that is her nickname. We're trying to be, you know, on the right page around here. And um, you learn something new every day, apparently. <laughs> well, welcome. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Nice to meet you, finally. Right. <laughs> Have I known you all these years? Do I really know who you are? She exists, y'all. <laughs> I'm pushing my whole existence. I know, I know. <laughs> all right, well, tell us a little bit about your journey. How did Curvy Canvas kind of go from idea to conception? Um, let's just start there. Okay, well... Um, I initially like had the idea in like 2016 is kind of like when I like had the idea because um, I've always been a plus size woman. I've always been curvy, you know, I've always been sexy, confident and all that good stuff. And I was like, and I've always kind of had like this hustlers, entrepreneurship mentality. You know what I mean? Like I'll go back a little further. So when I was in high school, I started like selling candy out my book bag in the mornings. Actually, I used to work at McDonald's. Like my first official job was like McDonald's um, on Metropolitan. I'm from Atlanta, so I'm Metropolitan. And um, I remember after like a month or not a month, it was a couple of times went, went by and like I asked for a raise and they told me basically no. And I was like, no, <laughs> I was like, wait, you're trying to like kept me out right here at this little back then it was like what 525 was like the minimum wage girl yeah yes. throw <laughs> back, yeah so I was like what are you trying to cap me out so like that day I quit my job I was like uh -uh, I'm quitting this job whatever like let it go so the next day I ended up going to like Sam's Club and I like started putting like you know start buying little snacks and I just started like had I brought a duffel bag to school and Ended up like before homeroom started, I was sold out. I had chips, hot Cheetos, Capri Suns, like all that stuff. So when I first, when I started doing that, I started realizing like, okay, I like to make my own money. You know what I mean? Like this is what it is. So like that kind of like put something in me. And I actually remember when I was in the sixth, in the fifth grade, my fifth grade teacher said the word entrepreneur, and I was just so like, I was like, what is that word? Ooh. And I found out what it was. I was like, I want to be one of those. You know, didn't know how to spell it at all. But I was like, I want to be that. I want to be an entrepreneur. I'm going to be that. So, you know, kind of fast forward um, to actually like starting a brand, you know, a little background. When I was in college, I was a part of a plus size modeling organization. And then me and three of my friends actually ended up, you know, co-founding our own modeling organization. And it was just a natural thing. I realized I love producing. I love creating. I love seeing things, you know, go from you know, thought to actual vision. So when I kind of came out, it was kind of like a natural process. I knew that I still wanted to be creative. I knew that I still wanted to produce in some sort of way. And I also knew like I wanted to like make my own money or be my own boss. It sounds easier than what it is, putting it out there, <laughs> you know? But um, so fast forward some more. I'm sorry, I talk in circles sometimes. So like fast forward some more. In like two, 2016, I was just like, okay. A lot of people was like, you know, why you you, you dress cute? You know how they hit the, you dress cute, big, what, big girl, you know. Nah, yeah, it ain't even for a big girl. Bird dress cute, okay? Like, period. period. Yeah. I was like, you dress cute. Why don't you like start, you know, the your uh, clothing line? So I was like, okay, cool. Like, you know, let me, let me start it. But I knew that I didn't just want to sell clothes. Like I knew that I wanted the message to be like so much bigger than just clothes. I wanted it to be about storytelling. I wanted it to be about empowerment. I wanted it to be about like style, you know, like I wanted to represent women in general, but because I cater to plus size women, I wanted to make sure that 
I were I was kind of like I was I was showing the sexy, the bold, the smart. Like the first thing when you look at me, you're not gonna see my size. You're gonna see me fine, sexy. You know what I mean? You're gonna see me. You're not just gonna reduce me to a size. So that's like that's what really kind of got the ball rolling. So the idea came like 2016. I played around. I ain't do shit, y'all. Um, can we curse on this show? I'm sorry. Girl, yes. Say whatever you need to. Because it, it, it's all a part of it. Okay, so, it is. Real, yeah. Because that one year one through three, um, year one through three for <laughs> any entrepreneur, or even up to year five, is truly just a guessing game if we're being it, real. Hello. And can you make it to year five to even kind of feel your way out to be like, this is truly what I want to do? Because it's going to take some time. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So that's the idea was 2016. I, I literally didn't do it. It came in my head and it left. So 2017, like going into 2018, if I'm not mistaken, it was like November. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm going to do it. And I was like, well, let's see if we're going to do it. Like make an LLC because you know, it's the first thing you do is like, let's do an LLC. So of course, like on paper, it started in 2017, but officially it didn't start until May, 2018. Um, so I launched like, I put everything on my website the first time, uh, May 20th, 2018 to be exact. Um, I had, I didn't even have that many items. And if I'm not mistaken, my Lisa, I actually think you bought one of the items, like one of the first items that I've ever had. I was at like your first pop-up shop. I yeah, was like the first like, pop-up shop. that red piece, okay? Yes, yes. That was like one of the first items I had. Honestly, you know, I was still kind of going through like the research phase, but I was like, you know what? I got the idea. I got the LLC. I got the website. Like I have to do something. And it's, it, it was kind of like, like you said, it, it was a guessing game. And, you know, I really didn't sell much. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even think, like the first two or three months, like I didn't even sell. I don't even think I sold anything, you know. But I knew that I had something, right? Mm -hmm. I put a lot into, I, I, listen, I, I'm always the type of person, I like a vibe. I don't even care if I'm at my house. I don't care if we taking pictures on the iPhone. Like I like to catch a vibe and I like to tell a story. So my first photo shoot, we did it like in my mom's backyard, <laughs> like on my brother's, you know, phone. But I wanted to make sure like people saw the story that I was telling, which was like fun in the sun. I think that's what it was. So at that point I was like, okay, somebody like it. Like somebody's going to like it because it's, it's something in it. So then fast forward to like my next pop-up shop. My first pop-up shop, which is, I think that was like the one you came to. In that moment, I had realized like, okay, this is something. Cause you know, even though it was like mostly my friends that came, I still felt the love behind it. And just to know like the feedback that you guys were giving me, it was authentic feedback. And it, you know, you guys kind of, to me, it seemed like you, you guys thought that it was a, you know, a good thing going. So I was like, okay, sis, let's keep it going. So then I started to kind of like get a little bit more creative and try to think about, you know, strategizing a little bit more and kind of marketing. So I kind of tapped into like marketing just a little bit. Still, I'm still learning marketing, but kind of tapping into marketing a little bit more. So I started seeing the sales pick up. So I was like, okay, you know, it can make me a little, a little money a little bit. So the first year I didn't make any money. The second year it like started to take care of itself. And then the third year, which is like kind of this year, um, that's when I was like, oh shit, you taking care of me now. Like, okay, business, I've been doing, like, I've been doing good, y'all. Cause I'm not gonna lie, in 2019, I was like, I actually stopped for like six months and I was like, listen, God, hey, I know I got this entrepreneur uh, spirit in me, but I literally do not know if this thing is for me. Am I supposed to be doing something else? So I had stopped and I, you know, I was going, you know, we all go through that pushy washy stage. And I was like, I need to make it bigger. Like I need to make it, it needed to mean more than just a clothing line to me. So I started the My Canvas campaign. You know, that was the first year that I did that. I know I'm talking in circles. So you can wheel me in at any time. Because <laughs> y'all should not Y'all, she does so much. And so <laughs> even like different pieces of her story, although we are focusing on Curvy Canvas today, there are many things that Bird has been a part of or ventures <laughs> that she started. When she said producer, she was not playing. Like, sis works with up and coming directors and is on sets, like travel. So it's, yeah. it's, it's all a part of it. So to me, this is all your journey. So continue to share, my love. Oh, thank you, y'all. Listen, I'm going all over the place, Jeff. But, um, 
in 2019, that's when I realized like how important it was to make your brand larger than just what I see, you know, like it had to be more than just money at that point because I needed to be fulfilled in some kind of way. And granted, I was like partly, you know, maybe 30, 40% fulfilled because I was like, I made my own schedule and, you know, I could do my own thing. And if I wanted to order some more stuff, I could, but I really wasn't, I wasn't in the brand, you know, it was like the brand was of me, but like I wasn't in it. I didn't see myself like completely in it. And I was just like, we got to put some more of you inside of the brand. Like, how can this touch other people? So I was like, you know what? I want to create a campaign called a My Canvas campaign. And I wanted to incorporate like, like women just in general and the stories that we have with whatever stage we're in in our process. And that process is life, you know? Like I, I call my line curvy canvas because your canvas, the canvas that you have, which is your life, your body, you can create style, work, however you want it to, however you want it to look. That's the power that you have with your body, with your life. So that's why I called it a uh, curvy canvas. And the same thing went to the My Canvas campaign. Like I wanted to incorporate just women in general. Like I feel like most of the times when you hear people tell their stories, they either telling you like how they started or like where I'm at, I'm finished, this is what I got. But like the process that you're in right now, like that broke shit that like, I really don't know <laughs> what the fuck, like, I don't know how I'm gonna even make money off of this. Like, how do I become a vendor? Like those things, you know, how do I create a website from scratch? And I don't really know how to turn my computer on. Like, <laughs> you know, like small things like that, people don't tell you, but it's like, everybody goes through that process. <laughs> so, like, what is this? Uh, my first website was a WordPress and I said, Lord, I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> Miller. right but <laughs> exactly but it's I wanted to incorporate that so that kind of got you me a little spark and then you know 2020 came and the pandemic hit because I was I had started doing well that's when uh, uh 2019 is like when it kind of started to shift a little bit and it started to like take care of itself because that was two yeah that was year two it started to take care of itself so 2020 last year pandemic hit and I was like oh shit, what the hell is about to happen? Because, you know, we all had these big ass plans, like 2020 is the year of the vision, 2020 vision, like, <laughs> this is our year. <laughs> and then the pandemic was like, um, I don't know. But I was like, it was something, I, I think it lit a fire. And I, I, it probably lit a fire for most of us, but definitely for me, it, it lit a fire in me, which made me like want to go hard. I was like, man, I don't give up. I don't care. Like this has to happen. And like, I was marketing like crazy. I still can kind of continue, you know, on my path and trying to follow the plan that I established for myself. And last year was literally the highest grossing year that I've had thus far. And I was like, that's when it started like taking care of me. I said, oh, I'm paying my bills off my business. I cannot, you know. <laughs> No, like for real, those that are in entrepreneurship, when your business truly starts to take care of you and it's not the side hustle, but it is the main thing that your income is truly coming from, yes. it's really a moment. Like yeah. it, you are proud, yeah. you can't made it here. Like that is something to be celebrated. So I just want to give you your flowers in this moment and say shout out to you and to do it during the pandemic. Yeah. Is that yeah. much potential to show like, just keep going. Like your yeah. journey, your journey. Yeah. I was, I, and no lie, like I was, I was really surprised. Um, but I knew that something like something had to pay off. And then, you know, even like coming up to this year, I told myself, I was like, cause around about, I don't know if anybody else has worked in retail, but there are on and off seasons in retail. So like, I know that January and February going into March, like those are very slow. Um, right. Like October, November, it gets a little slow right there. So like you can become, you can get in your head like a mug. And I be, like in November, I was like, uh, listen, all right. The money was coming in, you know, <laughs> it done slowed down. I mean, like what's going on? And I was like, well, you know what, Bird? Like you just have to make it to year five. I've been reading, I've been looking at other entrepreneurs and everybody say, if you make it to year five, you know, that's when you'll start really seeing things are happening. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make it to year five. I still got another like year and a half to year five, but I can tell that if I continue on the path that I'm on, my business will allow me to 
thrive in different ways, kind of break branch off into other things like I want, like I want to do anyway. So I'm like super excited. I know there was a lot. I have a lot more. <laughs> I know there was a lot, but that's just the gist of how I got to be, become an entrepreneur. So I kind of want to ask why we have this time, bird. It's just about like textiles and like where do you source clothes? So I have, so that took me. That took me a while, right? Because, you know, some a lot of people like go on Alibaba and be like, oh, we got all of this or like AliExpress because you can, anybody can do the shit, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, order some stuff and a shitload of things come from China. So my first round of clothes actually came from China. And I was just like, bitch, I can't fit this. Like, <laughs> not even somebody who's a small can fit their small. Yeah. Hold on, how can you fit at the first pop up shop? I wanted to say that, but I was like, we'll talk about this all here. She was like, My sister, how are you fitting into this? I was like, I don't know. And I got a wrap dress too that I still have that I wear all the time. Oh, that, uh, that floral one. Wear. Yes. I love that wrap dress. But like, I had to like really like dive in because at that point, I didn't even have a um, a seller's license. I didn't have a seller's license. I just had an LLC and an EIN. I thought that was it. But it's like, no, if you want to like, really get down to like textures and really be able to like source from the United States. Like you need to get you a seller's license. So I started, I got my seller's license and then I got some vendors who were directly in California. I got some mm -hmm. in California and some one in New York, but I had to like hop around to like find the vendors. So like spending money on like samples, like, can you send me, I see this on your website, but can you send me this so I can fill it? Because we women, whether you plus size or not, like, fabric matters and like if you said it's a jean we want a loose stretch in it jean you know what I mean like I want to make sure like I can I ain't gonna be able when I wash it it's not gonna shrink so I spent a lot of money on like trying to get samples from different vendors but I had to go through all of that just to get to two vendors in California that I solely kind of source my stuff from mm -hmm. <laughs> um and you kind of hit on this a little bit in different points already but what was the single hardest thing that you have had to endure and overcome as an entrepreneur to this moment? Getting out my own way. What did that look like for you? Um, and what and, it, and it's still something that I'm, I'm working on. Um, it's me not telling myself no before somebody else tells me no. Or it's me, you know, like, or it's me getting out of my head because I start to create stories, right? well, I don't know if this going to happen because they might like this, they might like that. And it's like, hey, sis, none of that shit exists that you're thinking about. Like, <laughs> pause. And I'm a Virgo, so, like, I get real. <laughs> I go deep. Once I go down the rabbit hole, I'm in it. <laughs> so I'm like, Virgo, bird, come back. <laughs> like, come back to reality. So it, it was literally me, like, having to, like, stand still, tell myself that, Everything that you're thinking of, all those negative things that you're thinking of, think the opposite, you know, like you thinking about what can't happen, but what can happen and, and really just telling myself, like, it doesn't matter how long that is going to take because time is going to pass you by anyway. So just do exactly what you want to do right now. And if you fail, you're going to learn a lesson. If you win, you're going to learn a lesson. It's no take. It's not an L that you're taking. You know what I mean? So it's like really me getting out my own way. And like I said, it's still something that. I'm working through now, even on a personal level, I'm working through that now. So like, I was just like, last year, I was like, you know what? I need a little therapist. Like, let's go to therapy, sis. Because, you know, and, and it's one other thing is like, opening myself up to trust that the universe is going to give me exactly what I want, exactly what I deserve. And believing that I deserve everything, you know, that the universe is going to give me and being prepared for it. So, you know, I had to learn how to trust. I'm learning how to trust myself, learn how to trust the camera person, the person working the camera, learn how to trust the models. You know, like I have to remove myself from trying to be in control of everything. And that that's my desk, you know, everything else, like all that other stuff is gonna come. Just work on what you can work on right now, get out of your head and like stay in the present. So that's the hardest thing. And I'm still like, I'm still going through that right now. It is, it is a journey, but something else we touched on even in this is like learning to trust that not only yourself, but like the rest of your team. Yes. Um, something I've noticed is like, I like to say you're the Issa Rae of Savannah State when it comes to like working with friends um, and just like building partnerships. So I know a lot of your friends that um, you also started the modeling troupe with that we referenced earlier have also been your models. Yeah. Um, 
what has it been like kind of transitioning from working with friends to starting your ambassador program? Um, so it's actually been pretty, pretty dope because, um, my friends who are my models, which uh, one of them was actually a co-founder of the model organization that I actually started, they've always been very supportive. And I think I'm very um, blessed to know that I have like a real support system around, you know, just my friendship in general. So they, they've always been extremely supportive. And the reason why I chose those two women and specifically Darnisha and, uh, and Dynasty, the reason why I chose those two girls to be my models is because we automatically have chemistry. We've been on stage together. We've done other things together. You know, like we've we've produced things together. So we already know the chemistry. Like I don't have to coach you through anything. And then the vibe was just like, good, you know? So I, I started to notice like, just even with those two, because at first it was me modeling myself and then, you know, here and there. And I was like, hey sis, you need help. <laughs> Like you need help, you need assistance. Like you can't spread the word by yourself. So, right, like come on. So then that's when I, I actually got those two. And then this year I was like, you know what? I want to expand my brand. And I started reading a little bit more about marketing and, uh, you know, just kind of getting the word out a little bit more. So I was like, you know what? I need some ambassadors. Like I need people who like represent my brand and my brand is in them. And they, you know, they kind of exude what my brand represents. Like I need some of those people. So we started um, looking for ambassadors. So, you know, we created a flyer and sent it out to people. People were sharing it on social media. And a lot of people kind of reached back out to me way more than I thought. Like, way more than I thought uh, we're going to. And, you know, I end up having some Zoom meetings and interviews with them. And I end up getting four new ambassadors. So now I have four new ambassadors. Um, we just shot, we actually just met up on Saturday. Um, and we just shot our new uh, spring collection, spring summer collection, which yeah, dropped. Coming out. Let's go ahead and do a little plug. You know what I'm saying? Kirby Campbell's spring summer collection is coming out you know, on Wednesday, you guys check that out, you know, if you want an extra 10% off, use the code Canvas10, and you can guys get an extra 10% off, you know what, I, I'm actually going to create, a, um, I'll create a discount code just for everybody who listens to, who See listens what to when you tune in to the Business Direct, yeah, um, a Business Direct uh, discount code, I'll do it tonight, and send it to you guys, but, um, yeah, so I had I started that and I just feel I just feel lighter because it's just not me. You know, like it's just not me trying to promote it. I have other people promoting it and they're creating their content and they're content creators. So it's like I get to pull from them, they get to pull from me. So it's now I feel like it's bigger than me, you know, which is something you want your brands to do. So I'm excited. What else is on the horizon? <laughs> like um where are you thinking about going next? So honestly, guys, I really have, I really want to do like a luxury plus size line. Um, and this is probably for like selfish reasons, right? <laughs> so I love the way satins and silks looks on look look on me. And just satin and silks kind of make you like a boss regardless. But like it's a um a couple of designers that I follow, and I'm like, <sighs> this looks good and like I know I would look good in it and like you know and I'm just like I don't really my clothes are no no granted my clothes are beautiful nice but like you don't really see like a luxury plus size line like I don't know like a luxury plus size line where I can like you'll be like oh you a boss 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 like <laughs> that's the feel that I want so that's something that I've been brainstorming about um, if you're a designer, you want to link up with me, let me know, because I can't really draw a straight line, but I know how it's supposed to look. I'm a visionary. I'm a visionary. <laughs> but, um, right. <laughs> right. But that's something that I'm looking uh, forward to doing, um, creating. And we have the, another summer line coming up. We'll have some uh, swimsuits and stuff coming out in May and in June. Of course, we got some more maxi dresses. We're going to have a pop-up shop in July trying to see how it's going to work out with everything opening back up. We're going to have another pop-up shop in July. And yeah, man, we're just, we're just keeping it moving. I want to have another My Canvas campaign, but I know COVID kind of restricts a lot of stuff. But yeah, we're just, we just trying to grow. We're trying to grow. Love that. What is the message that you would give to any woman, but especially a plus-size woman who is just dealing with some confidence issues right now or 
is a little bit afraid or uh, just, yeah, just afraid to take that first step and to be bold. What, what advice would you give them right now? Um, don't reduce yourself to your size. Like your size is literally the, like it, it literally can make or break you if you let it make or break you, right? So if if you are more, let people know what else you do. Like, who 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 are you outside of this shell right here? You know, like you need to be, are you an entrepreneur? Are you a mom? Are you, you know, it's other facets to who you are. We are dynamic people. We are dynamic women. We are, you know, like we are so much more than just our shell. And I feel like once you begin to start reducing yourself to just your size, like the world opens up for you because you see more than just that. And if you need help doing it, like, you know, read, read different kind of books. You know what I mean? Like change what, change what you're ingesting mentally, physically, all of that good stuff. And if you don't like the way you look, then you can, you can change it too. You know, just believing that change is real and not reducing yourself to just this shell it's probably the best advice that I can give anybody who's suffering with like confidence issues. Love that. You know you a bad bitch. Okay. <laughs> know that. <laughs> you talked a lot about changing and ingesting. What is your favorite book on entrepreneurship or anything that just helps shift your mindset that in turn help you grow your business? Ooh, okay. So the first one, I got like three books. So the first one, um, is Successful Women Think Differently by Valerie Burton. Oh, uh, she's amazing. That was like the first little book I read. And I was like, oh, I am a boss. Thank you, Valerie. That was good. Um, of course, like The Secret. I feel like The Secret is a book that kind of like awakens that like little thing in your head. You'd be like, okay, like a track likes, like, let me get it together. And then they ain't giving me no money. But this book right here. <laughs> Bit in a brand story. <sighs> It's, it's like changing, it's, it's shifting the way that I'm looking at how I'm putting my stuff out right now. How I'm, how my brand represents, how it looks, you know, it's, it's shifting a lot. So that's a good book. And um, The Four Agreements is really good. And The Alchemist. I'm sorry, I can keep going. But right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> all those in the comments, y'all, to like stay, stay up on it. Um, I would definitely be getting that first one. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Valerie Burton that, uh, oh, and Think and Grow Rich. That was actually a really good book, but all of the books basically in a nutshell, it's like mine, it's mindset, shifting your mindset. And I feel like once you, um, even get to the process of wanting to do it and when you started to read it, read it, and then you start to practice it, like it becomes a little bit more easier and the shit that you thought you couldn't do, like you really realize like, oh no, I really can do it. It may take a little time. It may take a little work, but once you shift your mindset, you start to realize how many things are like right here at the tip of your hand if you just get the hell out of your own way. So, so and and his mindset are so real. Yes, yes. As we come to a close, is there anything that you just want to end with? We have talked about how you got into entrepreneurship, starting with selling candy, quitting McDonald's, they was trying to cap a girl's income. At 25. <laughs> So building an empire on campus with friends to taking an idea and the process of its own formation and the life that is taken to being where you are now. Um, to anyone that is in between year three to five, what is just a closing statement that you would give them to encourage them to just keep going to year 10? Yeah, um, the first one is just, just like a couple of things I live by. I said this earlier, but it doesn't matter how much time something is going to take. Don't worry about the time because the time is going to pass you by anyway. So like do what you want to do. The time is going to pass you by anyway. And the other thing is like really legit, like get out of your own way. Like if you can, if you can get out of your own head and like put something on paper and follow a very simple plan, I don't care if it's get up, brush my teeth, drink my water and go take a walk. Like start to follow some type of plan. That way you can kind of get into the habit of checking certain things off. I promise you, your life will change. Your life will change. You can do anything you want to do. It sounds very generic, but that shit is real. Once you start to work your plan, get out of your own head and not worry about the time, you in the building. <laughs> Mic drop, okay? <laughs> Well, you guys, it has been another wonderful episode. Latasha Brown, thank, thank you so much for joining us. I'm 
don't call me bird in school. <laughs> no. out Curvy Canvas by Savannah State's own bird. Check us out for another episode of the Business Direct and stay tuned for that coupon code if you want to go shopping, y'all. All right. Thank y'all for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, thank you for joining us. We truly appreciate it.